Hello, welcome to the next video on the uh, series of uh, videos to convert a Nissan Sentra 2004 to an electric car. Um, I've been driving around a lot and I've been able to prove that it does have a 50 mile range. I've driven 48 miles and it still had uh, the maximum and it still had some uh, juice left in the batteries like for another five or six miles maybe. Uh, so it's working great. There is something that is, uh, I'm having a problem though. The bearing that is in the clutch is making some noise. Uh, for all those of you who are doing your conversion, make sure you change that bearing that is in the clutch because then it's complicated to change it if it fails after. It's, this one is making a squeaky sound. It was old. I didn't think about replacing it. And now it looks like eventually I'm going to have to remove the motor and put, put back a new bearing. It's not a big deal for me, so I'm not going to do it. I, I'll be driving a little squeaking there that bothers me a little, but I'm not going to replace it anytime soon. Um, I had another issue. This uh, pump that I installed originally for the uh, um, the uh, cooling system, which is uh, this is one of these pumps that uh, works for the wipers liquid, the cleaning liquid. This uh, wiper works, uh, these motors work, uh, make a lot of pressure, but they don't stand a lot of working continuously because they overheat. So this burn and I cannot use it anymore. So what I did is I replaced it with another pump. I hope you can see it. It's here. Uh, I'm using a computer pump. Let me see if this is better. Yeah. This is a water pump for a CPU and I just didn't remove this this motor anymore because this has a hole into the deposit. So I didn't want to um, you know close that hole. It's, it's that, instead I'm just letting the water pass through this to the new motor and then the new motor is uh, cooling properly. Now this new motor is just a motor that can uh, stay on for hours and is much more quiet. So this seems to be working fine. Uh, okay, that's all. That's, that's, uh, I've made a few improvements since the last video, which is one of one of them is the pump. The other improvement that I did was just a little light here in the dashboard. I just put a little light here in the dashboard that is just telling me when the uh, uh, pump is working. I just want to know when the cooling system is working. The other the other improvement that I did was um, I installed a J7072 uh, contactor. These are expensive and I didn't want to do this but uh, since I was going to use the car in a couple of places where I was able going to going to be able to charge in public stations I decided it was time to put this and I just left the original uh, charging connection next to it so I have the two of them now to switch between one one and the other uh, just basically um, I just basically installed here a switch an AB switch this is a ladder switch type uh, uh, or stairs kind of switch so I just flip up or down depending on what I which one I want to use uh, for J1772 you need a little circuit that I installed here this circuit is to activate the pilot signal sign signal the public charging stations will not charge if you don't have one of these so that's 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 it um, I also um, got a new plate and I put a sign here in the back um, trying to promote the idea of using electric car so this is my new license plate and this is my uh, a couple of signs that I put in the back and that they seem to be calling the attention. I get some thumbs up, so a lot of people are asking. I catch a couple guys taking pictures of the signs or, and of the cars. So uh, that's, that's, that's good. Okay, so um, what I want to show today is the maintenance that an electric car needs, uh, and I do this every month. It's uh, a little more maintenance with lead acid batteries compared to the steel, lithium, iron phosphate batteries. But since it's once a month and it takes about 30 minutes to do the maintenance, it doesn't really bother me too much. So I'm going to start with the uh, cooling system. So I just have an extra 
I just have an extra switch here to test the cooling system. And I basically just make sure that I test the cooling system, just make sure that it's working fine. Uh, basically, I have a switch to manually start it, which is here. And basically, just make sure that the water is coming through here, which it is. And the vent, the fans are working. Of course, they are working fine. You can feel the air, and um, that's it. Then the next test that I do is there. Are, um, if you remember, in the conversions I created, uh, the motor has two sensors. One is for the brushes when they're getting worn down and the other is when it overheats, which the controller can take as an input, and when it overheats, it goes into what is called the limping mode. And in the limping mode, it just works at a decreased uh, percentage of uh, power to let the motor cool off. Those two, I, I can just test when uh, the car is in movement, so I won't be able to show you now, but I'm gonna show you the, the two switches. The two switches for testing that are here. One is, I put it here just next to this. So I just have to flip this when I'm driving the car and it will tell me in the light, in the indicator, in the dashboard, the, the light, the error sign from the controller, it will tell me when this is activated properly. And the second switch is here. I still need to fix it in some uh, specific place. But also when I'm driving and I flip this switch, Whenever I see in the voltmeter movement, that means the uh, the uh, brushes are short and they need to be replaced. So when I'm driving, I do these two little tests and then I, I check if something's wrong. The limping mode has to be activated just with that switch. And oh, this is a valid mode also to decrease the power if you're gonna leave the keys to somebody that you don't trust or you don't know. And the other one is then the brushes sensor. That's just something I test when I'm driving once a month again. Um, the other test that I do is just make sure that the fans that uh, the fans that let me remove the delete here. The other the, the, the fans that um, take care of the gases that accumulate while charging. I make sure that they are working. So let me remove the lid, the, the, the trunk thing. So here's the, the, here's the timer, if you remember. So what I have to do is just uh, connect the power to make sure that they're working. So I'm going to connect the power uh, because, of course, those timers are, those timers and those fans are um, for when the car is connected. So this has a manual operation, so I just make sure that working so uh, you can hear the fan here in the back working. Uh, let me show you the one on the front. This is the other fan which pretty much takes care of this test. So we can go back now. Set the timer again in automatic. We want to make sure it's in automatic so it turns on at the desired at, you know, times like one minute or two minutes per uh, per month per hour. I'm sorry. This next test that, that I do is uh, the batteries. I have to fill up the batteries with this two water. So um, I have to go to each battery and open the um, cells. These are very convenient because you can open the three cells with one move movement. And then I just have to add a little distilled water. I have this tool that I got to add just uh, the right amount of water. It has to be just a little above the cells, covering just a little bit above, above the cells. And um, it just needs a little water, very little. One of these, uh, one of these can last for you know six months since it's just a little, very little. Now, if you remember, there are some batteries that are under some batteries are under um, the controller, so for those batteries, I need to connect to the uh, remote filling system that I uh, also installed in past videos, if you remember. So I basically have to install this, 
put the other end into the bucket, into the uh, deposit of distilled water. It's important that it's distilled water because if it has minerals, it affects the longevity of the battery. So um, anyway, and then we start, you start pumping until it's, uh, it cannot take any more water, okay? I'll finish this later. But then um, basically, uh, just have to refill the, just have to refill the uh, batteries with distilled water just a little bit. Um, also, I want to mention this. Um, this controller is made of aluminum, so for the cooling system, it's important that, uh, at least for this model of controllers, it needs a 50-50 mix of uh, um, uh, anti-freeze, and it's important that it be um, aluminum safe. It has here some uh, instructions where it says that it is safe to use an aluminum so it's just not any regular uh, cooling it needs a 50 50 water with uh, aluminum safe coolant uh, what else the next thing we need to do is test the batteries of each the test the voltage of each battery because if one of the batteries is considerably lower or higher than the others it needs to be balanced if it is lower than the others, it needs to be brought up with a separate charger. If it is too high, it needs to be discharged a little bit with a light or something that consumes power until it is at the same level to the, than the others. I'm not too concerned if it's just 1.2, 0.3, 0 0.5 volts difference. Uh, but if it is more, I will be balancing. I haven't needed to do that. And right now, I've used the... Uh, uh, I've used the... Uh, um, car for 1200 miles and I don't think it is a big deal right now but let's take a quick look so you remember that I did this um, service uh, terminal so I can just go and check each battery individually like this is 6.47 the second one is 6.48 the third one is 46.48 for then the 15 because it goes around and the, to the back. This is 6 6.49, 6.48, 49, 6.48, 6.48, 47, and 6.46. So you get the idea, it's not really bad. So I don't think I'm going to do anything with the batteries now. Uh, I'm going to just do a quick check on the back, just to make sure that they are okay or the same as the ones in the front. So this is the Ford batteries. battery, for example. This is, this is 648, this is 648 as well. This is 648. And the next one is 6.48, 49. So I'm going to, I'm not going to do this. I'm going to keep checking all the others. I don't want to bore you, but I just have to check the 20. And uh, unless one of them really is lower, or much higher than the other, I don't really need to do anything with that battery. Uh, another important thing is now that after I put in some water in the batteries, it's important that I clean the battery. Especially it's important that I clean that there's no uh, uh, electrolyte from the battery to any metal part because that causes leaks to ground and that causes the public chargers to detect faults to ground and don't, don't charge your car. So just clean the battery for any leaks for the uh, uh, electrolyte touching metal. Just keep the battery top clean. And the last thing that I need to do um, they, they, they suggest that I do this, uh, that every uh, car with lead acid batteries and lithium batteries uh, just check that the terminals are properly tied and they are not getting loose because if one of these get loose, there's so much power passing through here that they melt the lead, the, the lead terminals. So basically, uh, you know, lift this and just make sure that uh, these are tight. Um, in my case, I use a double double uh, nuts so they are tied with each other that helps the, this not to get uh, loose 
um, I checked the last month and none of them were loose so I don't think I need to do that but I'm going to do that I'm going to check anyway just to make sure that they're all tight so that, that's the last part that I really need to uh, uh, do for maintenance and of course then I just check the liquids for the brakes the, the liquids for the uh, um, wipers cleaners liquid the, the, the tires the pressure on the tires but that's not really related to an electric car just use the same reminder to check everything else um, I'm still working on the power steering for the next video I did some tests and it worked fine so I just need to fix it uh, it really worked fine so uh, I'll be showing that in the next video or two and I have also uh, received a few requests to show the car moving again because I just have one video of the car moving and I also have received a few uh, septic questions about the, the car really reaching 60 miles per hour in 10 seconds so I'm going to do uh, in the next video a test drive and also a speed test to check how much how many seconds it really takes to get to 60 miles per hour um, I think that's all I have for now. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.